As far as tribal lands go, uh, this reservation has more habitat available than a lot of reservations do. Uh, we're, because the Shoshone tribe was able to, to choose where we wanted to be, this, this place called the Uadai, the Warm Valley, on, on, because of its plentiful fish and game, uh, our leadership when the reservation was established recognized the importance of being able to, to hunt and fish and gather. When they were asked uh, after 1863 and between and up till 1868 when the Fort Laramie Treaty established this reservation as it is, the, the Shoshone tribe was asked, well, do you want to have the, the area near Fort Bridger? Because that was a trading place that we would go to at certain times of the year. And they said, no, there's too much wind. And um, they said, well, how about the Tetons area? And they said, no, there's too much snow. We want the warm valley. Mm -hmm. And this has been a story that's been passed down from, from our, you know, my grandpa's uh, talking about the leadership at that time, recognizing the importance of this area uh, for the resources that would be available in perpetuity for, for our future generations. This mm -hmm. reservation, um, in, in a lot of the help from the Fish and Wildlife Service, my dad was a biologist for, for that, or, that agency. As a federal agency has trust responsibility to tribes in management of, of resources, specifically for, for, for them, the fisheries and wildlife. This reservation and the tribes uh, were the first to establish a wilderness area in, in 1938 that's only accessible by foot or horseback. And with the establishment of that uh, and protection of that area, uh, that happened 26 years before the Federal Wilderness Act. Mm -hmm. So there's over 200 lakes and several hundred miles of rivers and streams that are, that are in the mountains of the Wind Rivers that feed into uh, the system w with, in terms of water and in terms of fisheries uh, in the Big Wind River. Our, name, our reservation's namesake. When our, when our land base was 44 million acres uh, and we would travel to different areas to hunt um, bison or bighorn sheep or sage chickens or prong or an antelope, that land base was large enough to sustain uh, year-round hunting. When we lost our 42 million acres of territory when it was reduced to the size it is now uh, and then up other subsequent losses of land, in 1868, unlimited hunting resulted in diminishment of our wildlife species. And so it wasn't until the, the late 70s and early 80s that the leadership was recognizing that we needed to do something in terms of wildlife management. The pronghorn antelope were gone. Bighorn sheep were gone. Elk numbers and deer numbers, moose and, and others were, were plummeting. And so with the help of the Fish and Wildlife Service and with the, with the help and recognition of that help by our, our tribal councils and tribal leaders, the game code was established that set seasons and bag limits on our wildlife species. That allowed eventually for reintroductions of pronghorn and bighorn sheep. Uh, one of the only bighorn sheep transplants done on, by train happened here on the reservation in the northern boundary in Wind River Canyon. So with the implementation of that game code, uh, we were able to manage our wildlife species such that we could build the numbers and increase the opportunities for tribal members to again subsist and utilize those resources for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So here at Wind River, we have probably one of the best wildlife management programs in the nation uh, and, and probably one of the best on an Indian reservation because of that collaborative effort between the Fish and Wildlife Service and the tribes. That, f that feeling uh, has continued in, in our effort with, with Buffalo. So not only working closely with the Fish and Wildlife Service as, as a federal agency, but also organizations like the National Wildlife Federation uh, through their tribal partnerships program uh, we've worked together closely for a number of years to strategically 
um, kind of maneuver the the right way to do a buffalo restoration effort here at Wind River. And that's been uh, several years of work. And without that effort and without that collaboration, this, this buffalo restoration project wouldn't have worked. But essentially there's less than 10,000 genetically pure bison in the United States that exist under natural regulating factors. Most of the bison today are under commercial production. They're bred for ease of handling or docility or phenotypic characteristics like dark hides or size. And so those are being genetically manipulated by man. So when it comes to preserving the bison species, it's incredibly important that we create satellite populations of genetically pure bison certified disease-free bison, but also bison that can exist under natural regulating factors like uh, climatic conditions, uh, predation, and actually just buffalo being wild buffalo. Mm -hmm. And so there's very few places that that can happen. Here at Wind River, we have the land base to, to do that. We actually have more habitat here at Wind River than what's available for bison in Yellowstone. Currently there's a, a carrying capacity of around 3,500 animals on about 100,000 acres in Yellowstone. Our target population for the reservation could potentially be 1,000 animals and we have probably uh, three to 400,000 acres in the Wind Rivers and another three to 400,000 acres in the Owl Creeks that are prime buffalo or bison habitat that contain summer and winter range. And so when I, when I talk about the importance of this reservation to uh, buffalo conservation and cultural revitalization, it's because we have one of the best opportunities to do that in, in that we are right here. Most tribes um, are on tracts of land that don't have large um, acreage. So when the, a tribe wants to restore buffalo, they have to fence off an area. Um, they can get up to 20 to 30,000 acres, which is a large chunk of land for other tribes. But it's, it's really interesting to think that we have hundreds of thousands of acres here that we could potentially manage them as wildlife under our game code. Very few places in the nation and very few reservations uh, can cl lay claim to that. 